Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. It's been a while, but I've been inspired by Baldur's Gate to dust off the Gates deck, which was a very fun and also relatively budget-friendly deck back in Standard, although it never saw a ton of competitive play, but I think Baldur's Gate might change that going forward as a legendary land with a Gate subtype, which actually comes into play untapped, which is unusual for a Gate, can tap for colorless, and can pay 2 mana, tap it to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of Gates we control. So this can give us a huge mana boost in the mid to late game and that can make a very big difference especially if we're trying to cast a large hydroid crisis for instance or cast multiple spells in the same turn once we're going off with the card draw from guild summit and then the other new additions from Baldur's Gate are some of these monocolored gates that we can activate to seek a non-land card, so it can provide a little bit of extra card advantage if we don't have one of our author card draw engines in play. And also important is they add more various gates to the deck, so we can more easily win with Mesa's End as our alternate win condition, which requires us to have 10 differently named gates in play to use the alternate win condition, which can actually be quite relevant in some of the more controlling matchups, where the opponent might have a lot of removal for our various creatures creatures like Gatebreaker Ram, but may not be able to interact with our lands, and then Mesa's End is the perfect alternate win condition. So let's go over the rest of our deck. We've got a ton of ways to put extra lands in play, which is important when all our lands come into play tapped for the most part, so having extra ramp to help us accelerate out our more expensive spells is important. So four copies of Gracer, four copies of Explore and Gross Spiral, which also draw a card in the process. Then we've got our gate payoff cards, including Gatebreaker Ram, a 2-2, getting plus one plus one for each gate we control, and as long as we have two or more gates, the Ram also has Vigilance and Trample, so this can turn into a huge win condition once we get to the late game. Then Gates Ablaze is the main interaction in our deck as a sweeper dealing X damage to each creature, where X is the number of gates we control. So importantly, it doesn't kill our own Gatebreaker Ram, which is always going to be bigger than the damage that Gates Ablaze deals. And then Guild Summit is the main card draw engine in the deck, can enter the battlefield and then tap any number of untapped gates we control to draw that many cards, which is an ability we'll sometimes use, but for the most part we're happy to play Guild Summit and then play more gates afterwards, as we'll get to draw a card whenever a gate enters the battlefield under our control and curving guild summits into root is one of the best feelings in this deck as not only do we get to search up two gates including Baldur's Gate but we also get to draw two of guild summit and that's gonna keep on snowballing for the rest of the game and then Krasis, another nice card effect that can help stabilize the board and gain a bit of life back and of course perfect alongside our new Baldur's Gate and then we also get to free roll a Gigantha as our companion. And then the rest of our mana base, of course, a ton of gates. We're maxing out all the teamer colored gates, since those are the colors we actually need in the deck. So for Simic, Gruul, and Izzet guild gates. And then we're just playing a couple one-offs of the other gates that we don't really need for their mana, but just for the different name to potentially win with Mesa's End. And of course, we also just need more gates for the various gate synergies. Otherwise, we could also just play more of these monocolored gates if we really wanted to, but it actually comes up quite often that we win with Mesa's End. And uh, yeah, no copy of Orzhov Guildgate, that's the only one we're leaving out, as it doesn't have any colors that we actually care about, but the new monocolored gates more than make up for it. And then we also have four copies of Plaza of Harmony as another land that comes into play untapped, gaining three life, which is useful against aggro, and then makes one man of any color that a gate we control could produce, so it doesn't really fix our mana until we already have the required color in play, but it can also kind of speed up the process. Let's say we're missing a red source, we can still have a Plaza of Harmony in play, and then at some point play a tapped red guild gate, and then all of a sudden the plaza will make the red mana required, so we can immediately cast a gates ablaze, so it's still helpful in that regard. And then a couple basics in case we need to search them up in case of a field of ruin, and also just another untapped land, which can be useful when curving out. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Got some early ramp. And plenty of card draw as well with Guild Summits. So just hoping we're not up against a hyper-aggressive deck, as we're missing red mana and Gates Ablaze. Turn one mountain into Dragon Rage Channeler. Could be a problem. Turn 
Turn to another channeler. Okay, but no way to enable them yet, it seems. Never mind, light up the stage. So they get to surveil one twice. Start filling the graveyard to power these up. And we're hoping to find some interaction here in the form of Gates Ablaze. Gatebreaker Rams not really gonna help long term once these gain flying. And Grazer also doesn't really block. But uh, opponent did not find a land there, so we might be in luck for now. I guess we'll go for Grazer. And then next turn we could already root to get Baldur's Gate going. And for now Grazer can soak up a bit of damage. So if they don't have a third land, they wouldn't be able to play Chandra. If they do, then they could play Chandra into Soulscar Mage using Chandra's ability. Which would be pretty rough. Right, they've got the land, sadly. So Chandra into Soulscar is probably the play. Opponent keeps card on top, so no surveilling into the graveyard. And there's Soulscar Mage. Take one. Ooh, Gatebreaker Ram is also tempting here. But if we root, we get to grab our Baldur's Gate, which will give us a huge mana advantage. Which is probably still better. And then next turn we can get our Ram going. And not uh, risk losing it to a burn spell. And then we want to get red mana. Can get a Gate to tumble down. In case we want to activate it later. Ooh, opponent's got the Blade Reforged. Grows if they exile cards. Which of course synergizes with Line of the Stage and Chandra. Let's bring things up to a simmer. It's gonna be Electrostatic Blast for now. Shrinking down Grazer because of Soulscar Mage and an attack. Right, I guess we'll jump for now. And then what's next? So we have seven mana total. I guess we'll start with an explorer or a growth spiral, doesn't really matter. Okay, fine, Maze's end. And then I can play Gatebreaker Ram. And hopefully a 7-7 seven seven is big enough here. And grow spiral again. Okay, and then next turn we can start drawing with Guild Summit. And hopefully a ram can soak up a hit from the Blade Reforged. Chandra goes digging, finding a land. And they're gonna activate Den as well. Alright, so we can take out Blade Reforged, assuming this is an all-out attack. And then probably kill Chandra on the way back as well. Nope, Blade Reforged stays back. Kill Den. Does put land in a graveyard for Channeler, potentially. So, Plaza gaining 3 is useful. Then how many lands do we want to tap to this guild summit is also an interesting question. So let's say I play guild summits. I can tap two gates and draw two and then still activate Baldur's Gates. Okay. And then tap this for green. So we can explore plus grazer. And grow the ram in the process. And attack Chandra. 
So we're starting to turn a corner here. Now with a triple guild summit available. Chandra down. And Monorad's gonna struggle to kill Ram, but now they do have double channeler to fly over. So we desperately need to find a Gates Ablaze. Channeler is forced to attack. Does anything else turn sideways? Nope. I'll jump. Alrighty. So step one, probably play Guild Summits. Let's say I play Guild Summits, play Gate, draw two. I can root and then still activate Baldur's Gate, so we'll see a lot of cards in the process here. All right, draw two. Find another ram. Still probably need a gates ablaze more than another ram. So let us play roots. Finding some more gates. Draw four. And hope there's something useful. Grazer, I guess, can jump a channeler once again and a hydroid. Hydroid helps, although I can't actually cast it with my current mana. So we'll be using this for green. And then we can Grazer. Problem now is if we draw into a Gates Ablaze, I wouldn't be able to play it since I don't have any red mana left but I'll still happily draw it. All right, Plaza we can put in play with Explorer to gain some more life, that's helpful. And now I could actually cast uh, Gates Ablaze if I happened to draw one. So now actually can also go for Krasis, which might be the safest play, since we have plenty more card draw coming up. Just want to make sure I don't randomly die here. So, Krasis for X equals 5. Gain some more life as well. And hit for 13. So yeah, keeping the Explore here instead of the earlier Gross Parrels was actually pretty helpful. Opponent blasts her face to go digging, finding a couple copies of Play With Fire. But they have a lot of creatures they need to deal with between the Grazer with Reach and the 5 5 Krasis, even though they could shrink them down with Soulscar Mage. Maybe they're trying to find a way to actually kill the Gatebreaker Ram by shrinking it down and blocking it. Play with Fire going face, and Blade Reforged keeps growing. Yeah, without this uh, Hydroid Crisis, I would feel quite nervous about potentially dying next turn. Still feel relatively safe, but you never know. All these fancy new cards proving to be quite powerful. As we go down to 9. Opponent puts it on the bottom. And takes 13. Okay. They get to untap. And uh, yeah, they've got a couple more burn spells. We could still be dead. But they probably have to kill us this turn, otherwise, the ram is going to be too much for them to handle. Play with fire down to 7. If they have a Discharge, they can deal 3 down to 4. And then we might be dead, as they have just enough attackers. So if they have a 3 damage Burn spell, I think they've got us. They have to turn the team sideways. They found a Shock. That's 2 damage. So if they have 2 of those, we might still be dead. 
So we know about shock, so we might as well block Soulscar Mage here. That's the most damage we can prevent. Alright, shock. Trigger prowess. Puts us at a virtual one life. So, do they have a burn spell left? We're at one. Well, GG's either way. Are they slow rolling us? Or did we get them? We get to untap. On the off chance that they're slow rolling us, I'm gonna keep the instant speed grow spiral to put in plaza to respond to a shock. But alright, looks like we got there. GG's. That last turn was incredibly important to gain the three of plaza and the extra life gain of hydroid. Otherwise, we definitely would have been toast. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we're packing double gates ablaze, so we can probably handle most creature decks. And then an explorer to ramp a little bit too. Hoping to find something like a guild summit eventually to draw cards with. Opponent blue-white could be a control deck, which usually we don't mind playing against, although our hand's actually incredibly weak to control with now triple gates ablaze which may not do anything in the matchup. All right, I guess this points towards artifact synergy instead. So now I'm a bit happier having triple gates ablaze in hand. And there's guild summit, perfect. Opponent playing the new artifact lands as well, which are great in any blue-white affinity deck as they're known, even though there probably aren't too many affinity cards in their deck. Opponent may be looking to exile or guild summit if they have a march. But nope, just another ingenious myth. So it might be time to pull the trigger on Gates Ablaze. But we can uh, grow spiral first if we'd like. Well, now I'm kind of tempted to play Gatebreaker Ram and then next turn Gates Ablaze. Since we should still be able to kill Smith, even if they grow. And then Circuitous Roots off the top would be one of our better draws. Drawing two with Guild Summits. And Soul Artifact, okay, that's a 5-5 Indestructible. So we won't actually be able to kill it with our Gates Ablaze. But once our Ram gets large enough, I guess we can try and block the bridge. Although there's also a prototype to eventually get rid of our ram, so yeah, the insole's pretty good here. So we're probably taking five, and then hoping for a gate off the top. That point's gonna hang back. Found a plaza, not quite what we were hoping for. So I can gates ablaze, put your gun in hands, and pass it back. Portable hole just to increase their artifact count, or to tap it for a prototype. That's fine. Our deck doesn't have many targets for it, although I guess they could exile Hydroid with it, since it does have mana value 2 when on the battlefield. And there is their affinity card, Thought Monitor, to draw 2. Okay. Take 5. And there's Hydroid, Speak of the Devil, so we can play it for X equals uh, 4 here if we'd like. And then probably find another gate with it before attacking. Okay. So finally getting to see Guild Summit in action. And then Root can find our Baldur's Gate. Still double gates ablaze in hand, so we should be able to handle most of their creatures. But another in soul on an indestructible artifact could be a problem. Ah, Soaring City channeled to bounce our ram. Fair enough. And another portable hole to exile Krasis. 
Although they probably wanted to tap the Spire, so the auto tapper may have been uh, sabotaging our opponent. They even had a fountain in hand too. So missing out on 5 damage here. Don't think it's gonna make or break this game. But another insult too, okay. Although we can gates ablaze, assuming we have 5 gates here, so we gotta play guild gate first. So if I gates ablaze, I'll have 4 mana left. So I might be better off casting roots as opposed to going another guild summit first into gate. So yeah, this seems fine. So this is for 5, deals with the portable hole and soul. Traces dice instantly, and then Root gets Baldur's Gates alongside one of these value gates, perhaps. Draw two. We'll have to discard to hand size here. A Grazer can go. Alright, so we're facing a 5 5 indestructible, but Gatebreaker Ram should be able to block it from now on. Sentinel, not too much of an issue. As we've got a Baldur's Gate to make a ton of mana. Opponent's down to one card in hand, a Karn, alright, can provide some Karn advantage, which is what they need here. Nope, going for a Construct instead. Maybe hoping we're out of removal, but unfortunately for them we're not. So, step one might be play Guild Summits. And then we'll pay the one, sure. Then we play our gate to draw two. Not gonna tap anything. And then we can activate our Baldur's Gates. Making green. Cast Gates Blaze. Play Ram. And we have enough for Root. And we're pretty close to having enough gates for Maze's End if we pick that up. As we draw 4, opponent's at 10, so pretty likely that the ram can just go the distance here. As we discard a couple cards here. Ingenious Smith goes digging. Finds Prototype, which they could channel for 5 mana. So that's a way to get rid of our ram. But then they won't be able to attack with a bridge. So then we wouldn't be taking any damage. Alright, opponent passes to maybe upkeep. Get rid of a ram, nope. Get a chance to attack first. So, sure, we'll play a gate. I guess at this point I should be playing the unique gates. And there's another gates ablaze, alright. So that's gonna probably force the issue on Prototype. Did not necessarily want to tap the Baldur's Gate yet. Hence, I guess the Auto Tapper even tapped my Baldur's Gate without making extra mana. So, that's a little awkward. I don't really want to attack with the Ram now since it can just block with Bridge. And then we wouldn't deal lethal. Although we're close to dealing lethal actually. I can Grazer put in a gate times two and then Grow Spiral once more, so that's gonna force the issue on Prototype. Otherwise they would take a lethal off uh, Trample damage. So yeah, we should have access to way more mana this turn if uh, the Auto Tapper didn't tap my Baldur's Gate there. But I think we'll manage. So Ram up to 15 power, so it's already gonna force them to Prototype to get rid of it. And then we'll just play a couple more rams to close out the game next turn. Alright, this seems fine. So yeah, when playing this deck, make sure the auto-tapper doesn't tap your Baldur's Gate. 
That's what I've learned. Opponent picked up a thought monitor to draw to. We're gonna draw to actually three with our gross peril here in a second. Portable hole can deal with the grazer. And I don't think our opponent can survive this. GG's. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is quite promising. Just missing blue mana for Guild Summit. But we can find it with Roots eventually. Up against a red deck. So I've got a bit of life gain here. And a sweeper. Which will both be important. A robber finds a grazer. That's fine. Okay, let's uh, diversify our gates, I suppose. And then uh, next turn I might already go plaza into gates ablaze, dealing two damage. Depending on the board. A root's also not too helpful for the opponent. And the grazer actually ramping them here. So they don't have much going on. Alright, I don't think we need to gates ablaze yet, if that's the case. Just uh, pass it back, and then next turn we can ablaze for three. So our opponent hit their land drop, there's Anax. And now I'm happy enough casting the gates ablaze. Opponent will get a couple 1-1s, one including from the Grazer, thanks to Anax, but a second gates ablaze will help uh, stem the bleeding there. So, yeah, we can uh, do this now, and then play another tapped land. Keep our plaza for later, not in any danger of taking lethal, even if Torbrand shows up, which would be the worst case scenario. They've got an Ember Cleave, but just on a 1-1 it's not too painful. Alright, so how do we feel about an Explore plus Gates Ablaze? Could also wait one more turn, since we're... Not necessarily taking lethal, but we're getting kind of in a dangerous territory. So, don't mind the Explorer plus Gates Ablaze here. And then next turn we can go Guild Summit, followed by Root, which will draw two right away while ramping us. Alright, there's Anax again, and yeah, there's an Amber Cleave in play, but a Gatebreaker Ram now too, so we can probably wait on the Guild Summit and just go Ram plus Root to grow the Ram, which will hopefully be large enough to soak up an attack. So we'll get Baldur's Gate, and then I guess we don't really care too much about the second land but might as well make it something that draws. Okay, so they can suit up Anax, but it would be a trade for Gatebreaker. Soulscar grows Anax a little bit more. Without Ram, this would have been lethal. And a Hydroid is perfect. Alright, so let's use Baldur's Gates. And then we can Hydroid for X equals 10. Gain as much life as possible. And yeah, I might actually Plaza just to play it safe. Gain three more. And then next turn we can reload with Guild Summit into Root. So we got pretty lucky this game between double gates ablaze, our opponent having kind of a slower start, and then now the Baldur's Gate into Hydroid to refuel. Opponent does have a Torbrand to go with the Amber Cleave now too, so that's a scary combination. But Hydroids can hopefully stem the bleeding a bit. 
So Guild Summit, I'm not gonna tap anything since we're about to draw a ton with uh, Root as well. So I guess we can play a regular gate first. And there's a Gates Ablaze, okay. How many gates do we have? I'm not quite sure. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Now I'm kind of regretting floating all this mana, because I could have left myself with a Hydroid if I Gates Ablazed it now. Uh, which I guess we can do this now. And then still root afterwards. So let's make some green. And our opponent has seen enough. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems acceptable. With a Grazer into Gates Ablaze against any creature decks. And then Root to find our Baldur's Gate as well, eventually. Opponent's black-red, but no turn one Thoughtseize. Gonna be a turn two thought seize, probably taking root. So we won't be able to find our Baldur's Gate. Alright, well at least we've got double ram to apply pressure with. Put on junt colors. Okay. Once Dominaria comes out, our opponent might be playing with Liliana of the Veil. Vale. We've got the Grazer ready to be sacrificed. Opponent might be playing with Tarmogoyf. Right now we've got two sorceries in the graveyard, so it wouldn't be very large. Alright, Pact Weapon. This one could be tricky. Let's see. You don't lose the game. I don't think this stops... Winning the game with Mesa's end at least, so that's something we've got going for us. And we've got double gates ablaze to kill whatever creature they try and equip. Alright, there's a gates. Attack for 12. And we can put a Gigantha in our hands. Okay, let's see what they've got going here. Maybe they have a bunch of creatures that would just die to Gates Ablaze, so they don't want to play into it. Four mana. Or Chandra. That's not really going to save them. So they might have a sacrifice effect, but we have double ram. And fatal push is not enabled here, since we're the ones who lost a permanent, not the opponent. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising start. We could explore on two. And then we've got a ram to follow up. Could also Growth Spiral, no huge difference. So, ideally we pick up a land, and then we can Grazer plus Ram. We we'll opponent on a combo deck, and combo is typically a bad matchup for us, especially one that can kill on the spot, and that we can't really interact with, with Gates Ablaze. So, if our opponent has all the cards they need here, we could be dead on turn 4. Did pick up a plaza, so we get to Grazer plus Ram. Start applying a bit of pressure. Although the gate count is pretty low, only 2 in play right now. So against Dragonstorm, we're heavily unfavored. There's a looting. So they just need a Mizzix Mastery, pretty much, to replay Dragonstorm and combo off. We can explore. 
Finding a Gates Ablaze, which doesn't do much. Let's Spiral. And hit for five. Do they have it? I guess they also just have Umburial Rites to bring back one of their dragons, but their land came into play tapped, so they'll have to wait one more turn. Okay, we can hit for six and play a small crisis. And then at least we have a Gates Ablaze to clean up any dragons if they don't have the infinite combo. If their plan is just to, let's say, reanimate Bladewing, bringing back Velomachus. Prismari Command keeps digging, discarding double Dragonstorm. Do we see a Mizzix Mastery for Dragonstorm? They can increase their storm count with Gaze at the very least. Right, reunion, discarding Mastery definitely means they have another one in hand. So we should be dead here to Dragonstorm, getting an extra copy of uh, Bladewing alongside Terror of the Peaks. And mastery can get back mastery, getting back the dragon storm just to increase the storm count even more. Or go for emergent ultimatum also works, as they can get dragon storm and two other cards. And that's gonna make it pretty difficult for us here, since mastery just goes for dragon storm in the graveyard, and scholar can also get back dragon storm. So no matter what here, opponent will get to dragon storm. So I guess we'll. Uh, Make them go through the motions in case they target the wrong card somehow. But yep, there's a Dragon Storm. And they really just need a storm count of X equals 2 with a Bladewing in the graveyard, or X equals 3 with no dragons in the graveyard to kill us. But they had all the time in the world to set up the combo here. So double Tower of the Peaks, followed by Bladewing. Bladewing can get back Bladewing, and it dies to the legendary rule, so they can basically keep looping those while Terror of the Peaks deals damage to first our creatures, but they could just start going face here if they wanted to. And then, uh, yeah, basically kill us on the spot. A deck we featured a couple months ago. So there's the Bladewing loop. Our opponent playing a version with Scholar of the Lost Trove and Velomachus. Both of those are optional. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems totally fine. Turn two, we could already explore if we want to. And then... Uh, if we find another untapped land, we could root afterwards, or we can just wait on the explore and just play a guild gate on two. Opponents on a mono green deck, and looks like elves, which can be a rough matchup if we don't find our gates ablaze. So we have a grazer we can play here instead. That seems reasonable. So let's uh, give that a try. And gain some life right away. Grazer will soak up some early damage until we can hopefully draw into our Gates Ablaze. So Root can find our Baldur's Gate to play a bigger Krasis, which can then maybe draw into Gates Ablaze. At least that's the plan. Duinen's Elite for now. Alright, so what we don't want to see next turn is an Archdruid making a ton of mana. Otherwise, this is a manageable start. And then having a Gatebreaker Ram to block some of the Elves can also buy us more time. Okay, another Gate is good. So we can play Ram and then set up for Root to find Baldur's Gates as well as a Red Source to potentially cast the Gates Ablaze. 
So I'll probably get a red-green land alongside Baldur's Gate. All right, it's going to be a clan caller, so dodged Elvish Archdruid at least, and the Mesa's End's not bad either. So yeah, let's root, get Baldur's Gate and Gruel Guild Gate, I think. And I'm fine attacking if our opponent wants to trade for their entire board, so be it. And then next turn we can play relatively large crisis. Or we can maybe work on the alternate win condition of Mesa's End. So still no third land. Opponent passes and there's a Gates Ablaze, awesome. Well, now we're in the driver's seat. So we can activate Baldur's Gates, maybe could explore first in the hopes of drawing a gate, but I think we're just gonna sink all our mana into Krasis, since we're not really in a hurry to cast Gates Ablaze. So X equals 6, draws us 3 cards. And then, question is, do I even play a gate? Because I could keep my Hydroid alive. So I might actually want to just pass without playing an extra gate. So next turn we can deal 5 to each creature. There's Archdruid, but we've got the Gates Ablaze ready to go, and our opponent's also just dead to the Krasis next turn. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Might actually play Grazer on one. Put in Guild Gates, and next turn we can explore. Opponent on a red deck with Kumano, but being on the play with a Grazer turn 1 feels pretty nice. And uh, we can grow Spiral here. Play some Gates. Next turn maybe double Explore. Do they have a Hasty Robber? They do, so that can attack past our Grazer, but we're gonna keep it around to block the Transformed Etching. Alright, Hydroid is nice, but we need to develop our mana first. So wouldn't mind hitting two lanes, which we did. Alright, and then next turn Hydroid for four. Can uh, start refilling our hands and hopefully stabilizing the board. Another Kumano. So we don't need to fear Goblin Chain Warlord finishing off our Grazer here, which is good. Looks like they've got a 2 damage burn spell instead, that's fine. Guild summons, good too, but we need the board presence more here. And I'll play a Mesa's End, so next turn we can maybe draw off the actual gate when we have a guild summit. Although I'm probably more likely to just play another Hydroid. It's a pretty big difference in number of lands in play. Happy to trade for another burn spell here. That's fine. They're gonna have a hard time beating a second Krasis now. And the Baldur's Gate is awesome. So, let's see, do I want to play a Guild Summit first? We have four gates in play at the moment. Yeah, I guess we'll just play Baldur's Gate and then play a very large crisis. And we've got our third and final crisis coming up, as our opponent's not catching any breaks. Still at a healthy 14. And now might be okay to go for Guild Summit, or we can wait and gain even more life off Krasis, which is probably the safest play. Double tap Q to float all our mana. X equals 8.
I suppose we could have played a Grazer putting in a gate first, since that would have made an extra mana with Baldur's Gate. So it would have been the same amount of uh, mana for Krasis, just an extra 0-3 Grazer, as well as an extra gate in play for next turn. And do we feel comfortable attacking? I think so. That way we can actually close out the game next turn by attacking with both. And we'll discard a gate. Alright, so we had this nice guild summit in hand. But didn't really need it as Hydroids provided a sufficient number of uh, cards instead. And even an Ember Cleave here is not a concern. So I guess if they Ember Cleave etching, it's still only 6 damage, so Firebrand's not enough to finish it off. So I think I'm fine to block. Damage happens. And a Goblin Chain Warlord is not going to be good enough here. And yeah, that's uh, the power of Baldur's Gate. Alright, so we got to see our gate stack in action. And the addition of Baldur's Gate is certainly a very impactful one. Despite only being a one-off, we have plenty of access to it between Roots and all the card draw effects in the deck. And then once in play, it can add a ton of extra mana, which can make all the difference in a strategy like this. Against mid-range and control, we can often outgrind them thanks to the card draw from Guild Summit and the other various utility lands in the deck. And against aggro, it all depends if we can find a timely gates ablaze. If we do, we usually stand a chance. If we don't, it can be pretty rough unless we're off to a very fast start, backed up by maybe our Boreal Grazer as an early blocker, into a Gatebreaker Ram as another big creature that some decks may not be able to deal with. Now we're still going to be unfavored against most of the combo decks in the format, as we don't have any meaningful interaction, we don't have any instant speed removal, only a sorcery speed gates ablaze, no counter spells or hand disruption, so the combo decks can pretty much combo off unopposed, and if they've got a functional draw and can kill around turn 4, which is quite normal for combo decks in Historic, we're not really going to stand a chance. So outside of the combo matchups, I think this deck is relatively well positioned, and also quite budget friendly, so you might just need to craft the one wild card for Baldur's Gate and have the deck ready to go. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.